Well, there you are. It's been a long time, hasn't it? It's just been, this is lesson number six. Back, if you remember back in lesson two, we were so young. We were so young. Anyway, lesson two, I said that you needed to know some chords. And I hope that you've learned all of your major chords by now and that you can do them, you know, except for B minor, uh, I'm sorry, B, B flat, F. We're not going to use those today. We will use those though, so get used to them. I want to show you magic. When you do this, that's how a guitar sounds when it's in tune. But it's also a chord. It's E minor 7th. You can make an E minor 7th several other ways as well. I'm not doing it today, right? We just want you to know there's a magic built in to the way a guitar is tuned. Now, a lot of people use alternate tunings, and, and they're all over the map. I mean, there, there's got to be a couple of dozen of them. And a lot of the songs you know and love off the radio, uh, back, remember radios back in the radio, that um, they would have used alternate tunings. We're not doing that to you. We're going to just use standard tuning, all right? But this is a magical tuning. Standard doesn't mean it's, it's you know, boring. It means it's useful. Once you think of the E chord, now you should know how to make an E chord by now. All right, I'll turn that up a bit so you can hear. Sounds pretty good, right? It is built for the guitar. Go all the way down. Now most guitars will have dots along the side. The first dot up here is usually three, then there's five, then there's seven, nine, and it goes up to 12 where you often have a double dot. I recommend, in fact, that if your guitar does not have this, that you put little dots on there, a uh, fingernail polish or something would do, because it, it's very helpful. You cannot learn the guitar doing this. It has to be straight up, or your fingers won't be able to do what the fingers need to do. But for the fingers to know where they need to be, those dots are very helpful. We're gonna go all the way down to where your first finger, make the E. And slide it on an excruciating squeak you know, all the way down to where your first finger is on the eighth fret and your middle finger and your ring finger are here on the ninth fret and be prepared for magic now strum all the strings that is beautiful isn't it I'll just give you an example right changed position. They didn't move off of these strings. They didn't have to reform and do any of the wiggly bits, right? They kept the E chord form starting on seven just because, well, I'll tell you why later, okay? And we're gonna, you're gonna have some fun with that. Now, you might say, but I don't know how to do all those things with the other hand. That is right, you don't, because I haven't taught you and naughty me, right? But, from I'm always going to name it after the pointer finger okay E chord on the eighth E chord on the sixth E chord on the fourth E chord on the second and just bog standard E chord and I did a little thing up here keep the same shape come down here to 13 if your guitar has enough room here um, some guitars only have uh, 10 or 12 that you can reach, all right? So that's actually an E chord again. You'd come back to E by the time you get all the way down there. But you can do this with your patterns. That arpeggio or the... Everything we've done, even the boom 
chuck chuck. Think of the songs that you could make up without ever doing more than this. There is a famous song. It was done by the great John Denver, where he did exactly this. And then after he hit that, that low E at the very end, and all strumming, so you don't have to do anything complicated here, he goes to a D and then a C. Now, I cannot sing like John Denver. He sang um, quite a bit high, very true. Uh, very, he just nailed the notes, as um, I think a PBS special once called him the best friend a song ever had, and, and they, were, they were correct. But we're gonna go back down here to the eighth, all right? Now, he would do a little something different with this, but we're gonna keep this very simple, just, and don't worry, hit all the strings because of the amazing tuning of a guitar in tune in E minor seven, you can hit all the strings on all of these and nothing will sound out, right? We're gonna go from the eighth, down to the sixth, down the fourth, down to the third, and uh, the second rather, and the fourth. Uh, since I messed that up, eighth, sixth, fourth, second, and the E chord all the way in, all right? started that beautiful progression the one thing different he did was he formed that e chord with these three fingers so he'd had this one loose to do a little bit of um you don't have to do that if you want to do it so it's a hoot you can now you're doing is popping and you gotta choose there I was popping the 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 last four strings I can pop just the ones in the middle I can even just pop the first four the bottom four strings when I say pop what you do is your thumb and these three fingers they just do it at the same time. Little pinch and let go. When you want the sound to stop, just kind of let loose. Whenever a string, did you hear that? Whenever you let loose and whenever you hit, you're making a sound and you can add really pretty bits to it. I'm gonna show you another chord because of the miracle of um, E tuning. You know how to make a C. You should know your sevenths. You gotta know your sevenths and your minors, all right? A C seventh is just a C. And then you put your little finger to work on that third fret, third string. It's a blues, all right? Really cool. But I want you to ignore the E strings, the top and the bottom strings. We're gonna pop just the C seventh. And then we're gonna move it up two. That's a D seventh chords move. Who knew? <clears throat> this is this is too easy. We're going to have to go do something hard now. Like a ukulele. How about moving it up to five now? <sighs> Same shape. Do not change your shape. Guess what we have? Well, that was a C7. This is a D7. So you're correct. This is a K7. No, it's an E7. It's an E7. Because it's an E, it's friendly to all the strings. seven down here and it's really really cool you can do uh for example a um, um false imprisonment blues all right e and he goes from this and then you can put your finger down there on the third fret second string 
because that's an E7. Or if you want to be really cool, you can come all the way. And then you just slide down here and make an A7. And if you want to then go finish the song, you only need one more chord. That's a B7. I'm doing something fancy down there. You don't have to do that. Uh, a lot of people make their B7th, by the way, especially if they have big fingers, they'll hold those two down. Um, I don't. But I do tend to shift that one back and forth, you yeah? And again, this sounds super fancy, and how can we do this? Are you kidding? All right, just use your patterns. That won't work with um, Folsom Prison Blues, but this would. do it if that if that hurts your little finger don't do it well unless you like pain in which case you probably got the wrong youtube video um you can lift up your index finger from the e just lift it off Hear that? it's an e7 the magic of the standard tuning so you can do e three chords boom you're done all right you've learned some magic here write write some of your own songs you're gonna find out things like the a minor it moves too this is so cool i'll see you at seven seven what the number seven